How does making money while you sleep at night sound? Well, this is exactly what passive income is. And the main advantage of this is that it frees up time for you to be able to do the things that you want to in life. So active income is where you work at a job from nine to five, 40 hours a week, and you're physically there. Passive income gives you freedom. You are your own boss and it gives you time, time that you would want to spend with your family, to travel, things that a normal job would normally get in the way of. In this video, we're going to talk about five ways you can earn income passively. And it does take some effort to get started in the beginning. However, once it is set up, you can easily earn a couple hundred bucks each day with little to no work. All of these are more long-term passive income methods that can be done at home as well. So the first one up on this list is dividend ETF investing in the stock market. A dividend is a payment by a stock market company that you hold. An ETF is a large collection of multiple companies in one purchase. Instead of buying one company that pays a dividend, you can buy a hundred companies that pay a fair dividend in one purchase. This is easier for many reasons. If you buy multiple paying dividend companies, what ends up happening is you'll have 20 different companies you have to sort of keep tabs on. So you'll have to look up their balance sheet, quarterly and annual reports. You have to look at the competitors. You have to look at where the company is heading. This is a lot to keep track of and you'll have to do it for 20 different companies or 30 different companies, which is a lot. It takes time away from your daily schedule. Whereas if you buy one dividend ETF, you won't have to look at all those individual companies. It just makes life a little bit easier and it saves you more time. So let's say you put in $100,000 into a dividend ETF that pays 5%. Each year, you'll be getting $5,000 for just holding that ETF for doing absolutely nothing. When you hold a company in the stock market, they'll pay you a certain percentage of what you put into it. Two that I really like is SCHD and DIVO. SCHD has a lower dividend yield percentage, but the capital that you put into it grows on par with the market average, which is the gold standard. And you're not taxed as heavily on their dividend payments as well. DIVO is another ETF that has a higher dividend yield percentage, but it grows a little bit slower than SCHD. I'm not telling you to invest in those two companies. Those are two that I happen to like. So the idea behind this is you put in, let's say $10,000. The next year it can grow to $11,000. And in the meantime, you're getting a dividend payment for just putting money into an ETF, a collection of numerous companies. SCHG has a hundred different companies in the US, for example. And the way I would do this is I wouldn't just put in one large sum. Remember, you want to invest money that you can afford to lose or money that you don't need. So I would put in 10% of my paycheck every single month into a high yield paying ETF. And then you collect the dividends and you watch it grow over time. The next one on this list is opening up a business that you are passionate about, establishing it and having great employees and managers run it for you. Obviously a business is very time consuming, especially in the beginning, but once it's set up, you can slowly step away and then maybe you attend meetings once a week just to keep a tab on things. So over time, the idea is it becomes a little bit more hands off. I'm going to give a personal example. I had a sidewalk violation on my house. I needed to repair the concrete on my sidewalk. So I ended up hiring a general contracting company. The owner of the company basically set the prices and we negotiated the terms, how long it would take. And in the end, he hired workers to complete the job. He didn't partake in the actual sidewalk pavement job itself. So he paid a portion of that to his workers and the material and kept the rest for himself. But he really, it was passive. He didn't really have to do much. And we live in a digital world now, so you don't necessarily have to do this with huge overhead costs. It can be done remotely now. Let's say you run a social media management company, for example, and a client pays you a couple thousand a month to manage their social media platforms. You can hire a photographer to get photos, a videographer to get video clips and have them splice it together. Another idea is running a window cleaning business. Customers reach out to you. You're the one that negotiates the prices and then you hire guys to do a number of windows in a geographical neighborhood. If the job was 200 bucks, you pay him 50 bucks per house. And at the end of the day, you didn't really have to put in much physical work or you didn't have to really be there. The next method is a concept that a lot of people talk about, and it is a great way to build wealth along with having passive income also. And this is real estate where you purchase a property with the sole purpose of renting it out. You also need a place to live as well for yourself. So it might not be a bad idea to buy 
a complex with two units or two family house, you rent out one unit and then you live in the other one. You know, with purchasing real estate, you do have to put down about 20% of the total value. And with the rest, you can take out a loan from the bank. States like New York and California, the real estate property tends to be very high. Whereas you have other states like Virginia, where you can buy a one family home for 200K or a two family home for 300K, it's a little bit more affordable. So you need to look at states where there's a reasonable cost to purchasing property. The value of the house goes up over time and you start to build wealth and then you accumulate more property over time. It's easier said than done, but at the end of the day, everyone needs a place to live. There's always going to be a need for this. And real estate is one of those passive income streams where your initial investment always goes up over time. Next method of passive income is very straightforward, using and storing your money in a high yield savings account. So if you have any leftover capital or money you're not really using, you place it into a high yield savings account and the interest rate varies quite a bit. Um, right now it's fairly high. It's anywhere from, you know, uh, four and a half percent to 5%. And what it is, is usually a online based bank that you place your money into that pays you four and a half to 5% based off the amount that you put in. So a lot of people have six months worth of emergency funds. Now, instead of placing that in a a traditional large bank savings account, which pays you like 0.01%, which is almost nothing. You place that capital into one of these high yield savings accounts. And over the course of a year, you'll get four and a half, five percent back. Very similar to the example earlier with dividend stocks. Um, let's say you put in a hundred K into a high yield savings account that has 5%. You're getting back 5,000 a year for doing nothing. But the difference here is that the capital doesn't really grow that much. It stays flat and these interest rates vary quite a bit. So it's a very good way of, you know, putting aside capital that you're not really using into something that passively earns you four to half, five percent for doing nothing. And the last passive income stream idea we'll be talking about today is affiliate marketing or some kind of digital commission based sales with the brand. So affiliate marketing is a link that you have based on a product you want to promote. So you may include these links in your blog or you make a video about it and you promote it in order for people to purchase it. And you get a small commission, usually a small percentage based off that sale. So obviously you need a, a platform for this or some kind of blog. And there's many, you have TikTok, you have Instagram, you have Facebook, you have YouTube. Uh, you can have your own personal website blog, whatever the case is, you need a platform. So I'm going to give a quick example of this. I have a product here. It's a egg microwave cooker. Basically you put the egg inside, you put a little bit of oil, uh, whatever seasoning you want in it, you close it and you pop it in the microwave for one minute and then you open it and the egg's done. I don't like cooking. So this is a very easy way for me to make breakfast. I personally use this product. I love it. In terms of the platform, I do have a food blog on Instagram. In order to get a commission off of this product, I might make a reel or a story post about it and leave a link in my bio or like a swipe up link. And if one of my viewers or followers purchase it, I get a small commission based off of that. So obviously here, the amount of money you make is based on how big your platform is and how well you design your video. It really depends on your interpersonal skills here and how well people trust you. I would say out of the platforms that are available, TikTok probably has the biggest reach and you don't necessarily need a massive platform for this kind of thing. Even smaller accounts can make great videos that go viral. And in this situation, you would have to sign up with Amazon affiliates. You get into the program, you have the link and you start promoting products and hopefully people that see it will click on that link and purchase the item through your link. And then you get a commission. That's how it works. So when you start off doing this, trying to acquire more streams of passive income, it may not seem like a lot, especially in the beginning, but when you start getting it from multiple sources, it can add up very quickly, especially over time. Let's say real estate, for example, you know, one property in the beginning might not bring in a lot of passive income, but over a decade, you build up a portfolio of 20 different houses and they're for the most part paid off. Now you're getting a pretty large stream of passive income where you don't really necessarily need to work anymore at a traditional full-time job, or you've been consistently adding to a dividend ETF over a period of decades. And now you have a couple million invested. You don't have to take out the principal amount anymore. You can just live off the dividend payments. And the whole point of this is to give you some financial freedom 
early on so that you wouldn't have to be working well into your senior years, which is the reality for a lot of people. Having the freedom to not have work obligations, to just get up one day and say, tomorrow I wanna to travel to Europe or spending more time with your family, seeing your kids grow up is really the most appealing part of this. At the end of the day, it buys you more freedom and more time for yourself.